hello everyone today in this video we'll be discussing the third module of uh, 21 ph 12 and uh, in this module we have the main topic lasers and optical fibers so before starting if you like this video hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel okay so let's get started with the uh, topic lasers so in lasers the main topics which we have are uh, instance coefficients the derivations and um, the working of co2 laser and uh, semiconductor laser which is um, gallium and arsenide so these are the two main uh, topics in this uh, main topic lasers so let's get started with the topic lasers and understand what uh, is in the topic okay so laser what it is it stands for light amplification by simulated emission of radiation okay so according to max law this is the important uh, formula delta e which is the change in energy is equal to h into nu which is frequency that is equal to e to minus e1 so what is nu nu is equal to e to minus e1 by h okay that many hertz that Type, there are three type of uh, interactions which are possible this is very important because in the instance uh, derivations of the uh, coefficients we will be using these uh, cases here okay so there are three main things one is induced other one is um, spontaneous and the third one is stimulated okay so what are the differences between three let's understand the system is uh, elevated from a lower energy state to a higher state this is the lower energy state this is the higher energy state so what happens is there are two states here and there is a electron here okay so what happens uh, the atom is present here and when an incident uh, proton comes the energy is transferred to this uh, atom so if energy is transferred to an atom it uh, moves from a lower energy state to the higher energy state so that's what happens in the induced absorption there is an energy being um, absorbed and the atom moves from lower energy state to higher energy state and in spontaneous emission the emission of the photon by transition of a system from a higher energy to a lower energy state without the aid of external energy so what happens if a, a atom moves from higher to lower energy it emits some energy so that goes uh, in this way okay and the third one is the stimulated stimulated means what the energy difference is here and there is an electron here okay so what happens when another photon comes be because of the influence of this photon this also emits some energy okay and it comes back to the uh, normal state so this is known as stimulated emission okay so let's see what are the derivations uh, under this topic uh, in sense coefficients so there are three cases right so we'll be having three derivations okay so firstly you need to understand there are two levels e1 and e2 e e1 is the lower level e2 is the higher level and n1 and n2 are nothing but the number of atoms in the first level and the number of atoms in the second level which is also known as the population of the energy level okay so u will be the energy uh, density of the incident beam of the radiation of frequency nu so let's consider the absorption and two emission process first one is the induced right so it is absorption and the uh, second and third one are the spontaneous emission and the stimulated emission so those two are the emission process so here in the first in uh, induced absorption what we have is the rate of absorption is proportional to n1 into uv uv is the energy density n1 is the how many atoms are there in the first state okay so rate of absorption is nothing but b12 into n1 n1 uh, uv so this is the rate of absorption this is the uh, proportionality constant because rate of absorption is proportional to n1 uv so the, therefore uh, b12 is the constant and it is a constant call, uh, called as in uh, instance coefficient of induced absorption b12 okay and spontaneous emission the emission is happening here so the energy density if we consider as n2 here so it will be a21 n2 a21 is the proportionality constant called the einstein coefficient for spontaneous emission okay and in stimulated emission what we have is uh, n2 uv so b it will be b21 n2 uv okay so for the stimulated emission it will be b21 for the first one it is induced absorption it will be b12 okay so let's uh, see the uh, thermal equilibrium formula the rate of absorption is nothing but uh, rate of uh, spontaneous emission from the uh, uh, plus rate of stimulated emission the emissions are equal to the absorption right so we'll be substituting the formulas which we obtained uh, in the three cases the three formulas are this one this one and this one and after we simplify it and take common things out and consider this uh, means uh, like this n1 by n2 is equal to this one so if you consider those things and write the formula finally what we get is this one okay b12 is equal to b21 that's all what you have to prove how do we get this one we'll be considering this one by one okay so uh, till here you understand right we are just uh, taking out the common terms here in the denominator and uh, writing it like this after that uh, by boltzmann's law we are substituting the value of n1 by n2 as e power hv by kt so uh, this is what we obtain here and after that by planck's law this is the formula which we have so if we compare this formula what we obtain is this is equal to this one and this is equal to this one right so we have obtained two things here b2 by b1 uh, b1 uh, b2 by b21 is equal to 1 uh, a21 by b21 
1 is equal to 8 pi hp cube by c cube therefore uh, by this we can uh, mean conclude that b12 is equal to b21 so the probability of the induced absorption is equal to the stimulated emission okay therefore a12 is the written as a and b12 is written as b and uh, finally in the uh, exam paper they will ask you to prove this one okay b12 is equal to b21 so make sure you practice this and uh, go before uh, appearing for the exam okay so this is what the final equation will look like uh, if you remove the a12 and all so this is the uh, generalized equation okay so this was for the derivation of the einstein's coefficients now the conditions for laser action since we are going um, uh, going to study about the co2 laser as well as the uh, germanium arsenide uh, laser uh, for these two we need to understand some conditions okay so uh, conditions for laser action are two first is the metastable state uh, second is the population inversion what is metastable state what is population inversion let's understand metastable state is a special type of excited state where the lifetime of atom is more than the normal excited state population inversion means it is having uh, means uh, it is a state of system in which the population of a higher energy level is greater than the lower energy level that's all the two conditions if it's satisfied it will be in a um means th those two are the conditions for a uh, laser action okay so uh, the required of uh, laser system how to achieve those two conditions is by pumping process what it will do it will supply energy to the medium to transfer it to the state of population inversion okay and active medium supports population inversion and it uh, leads to the metastable state okay and this is the laser cavity where the experiment will be happening so this is the overall structure of how the co2 uh, carbon uh, emitter looks like as well as the uh, germanium arsenide laser looks like okay so here how how many things you can find three things are there okay this is the mid part this is the ending part this is the starting part okay so here two reflectors are there okay total reflector and partial reflector between the reflectors what you can find is the laser cavity here the energy is put okay so again here are the reflectors total partial and here is the cavity and the energy is put from here okay that is the uh, overall structure now let's see how is the uh, co2 laser made in that there are three main things there are three modes of vibration the first mode is the symmetric which will have uh, in the both the directions equally and uh, asymmetric in which one of the modes will be higher and bending mode means uh, it, it will go like uh, down and up okay that is the bending mode so uh, considering these three uh, modes of vibration we'll be studying the co2 laser so in the co2 laser first you have to make the construction of it so it is same as the previous one this is the reflector this is also the reflector uh, partial in the total and here we have the uh, laser cavity okay and the power is supplied from here now it consists of a, a discharge tube of diameter 2.5 cm and length 5 m and it's filled with quartz plates uh, functions as Brewster's window okay means here the quartz plates are filled so it uh, functions as a Brewster's window and the uh, uh, plate has got two parallel mirrors one is partially silvered other is fully uh, silvered to the laser cavity just uh, make this diagram and explain each of these components okay that's what i've uh, written down here and after that uh, the working of it is as follows firstly nitrogen will be uh, transferring the energy okay both uh, nitrogen and carbon dioxide both will be transferring the energy first nitrogen will transfer so what's happening here as you can observe it's reducing the energy level right two energy levels one is higher one is lower it gets reduced and some radiations are emitted okay and it finally comes down to the ground state so that's what's happening here um when the electric fields are applied means when the electricity is applied at that time n2 atoms are excited to the higher energy level so firstly uh, the atoms will be here electricity is applied it will go here and after that what happens um, it mixes with the co2 molecule and the n2 molecule and it uh, releases the excited states of n2 and co2 okay so n2 is in metastable state okay when n2 is in metastable state it collides with co2 so again what happened here and nitrogen was here electricity was applied nitrogen went here now in this state it collides with co2 and uh, brings uh, back down to the uh, smaller states now co2 is excited and n2 is in the ground state okay after co2 is excited two things happen from e5 to e4 and from uh, e5 to e3 10.6 and 9.6 uh, two waves are released okay and when this happens the population inversion is achieved okay after these things happen the transitions uh, means gradually slow down and they collide with the ground states where helium and water vapor is there so it comes down to the ground uh, ground state and during this operation both the continuous and the pulse laser emits the radiations okay so to uh, quickly wrap up what happens here is a uh, nitrogen uh, molecule will be here electricity is applied nitrogen goes here it will come here it collides with the co2 molecule two things are released it uh, moves to two different levels and after that it keeps on gradually decreasing until it reaches the ground state where helium and water vapor are there uh, the carbon molecule uh, interacts with the uh, helium and carbon um, um, 
water vapor so uh, when they collide and uh, the reaction is over in between that whatever the uh, things are released the, uh, those are nothing but the laser emissions okay this is how the co2 molecule uh, co2 laser works okay Moving on to the next one, we have gallium arsenide uh, uh, laser semiconductor. First, you have to make the construction here. In the construction, you can find mainly three things. Laser beam is released from where? This is the main component and it is attached to the power supply. So, okay. And you have to explain this, how it is made. Firstly, we have the top layer as P-type and the N-type is here. The active region is in between. And this is uh, semiconductor, so it's biased like N-type or P-type biased. And uh, here the reaction happens and it's uh, connected to the power supply here. And it is made up uh, of a thin sheet, which is uh, of the surface level and here also in the ground it is of made, uh, made of some material which allows the uh, reflection and the traveling of the waves so uh, those are the things which you have to go through the notes and write by your own first make this diagram explain each of these components and the working of it is as follows firstly what will happen is if i give you the brief overview of what's happening here is here the electricity is provided and after that the laser is released so what happens is before the electricity is provided as you can see there's a clear gap here right when the gap is here there will be no radiation or uh, means emissions and all when the uh, electricity is applied uh, applied the biasing happens when the biasing happens the electrons from this state come to here and the holes from this state come to here when electrons and hole combine at that time the energy is released here okay which means the laser radiations so this is what i have explained here it is heavily doped pn junction as shown above and due to the heavy the Fermi level is passed and the electrons occupy the conduction band on the P side from the N side. After that the electrons uh, come here from the P side to the N side. Also the holes come from here from the N side to the P side and after that uh, a suitable forward bias is applied to overcome the potential barrier. When the uh, forward bias is applied uh, because of the external electricity and the power supply it overcomes the potential barrier and at that time the electrons from the N region hole are combined in the junction. When they are combined the inversion occurs and then the uh, protons are released over the laser to a recombination leading to build up uh, a gap laser okay so to quickly wrap up what's uh, actually happening here is uh, before uh, moving on like uh, before the electricity is applied there is a gap here when the electricity is applied the electrons come here and the protons come here uh, means the photons come here after that um, when the holes and the ele uh, electrons are combined at that time the energy is released here so that's all what is happening here okay that's all what you have to explain in your own words and where are the applications of it it's used in the defense as well as in the medical applications like in the eye surgery and the screen treatment moving on we have the next topic optical fibers here the main important topic is the numerical aperture and there are some numericals as well which we will be solving and there's a, a discussion of the uh, st stack diagram of the point to point communication attenuation and uh, see that there are some numericals uh, means the derivations also and we have to use the snell's law to derive those derivations so let's see what are the topics and uh, what are the important ones in it okay so before starting what is optical fiber optical fiber is nothing but a uh, pipe made up of glass here so it uh, means put light in here and it gets reflected and it gets traveled okay that's what that's all what is about the optical fibers now in this uh, second half of the module we'll be discussing uh, at what angle if you do the reflection uh, internal reflection will happen and uh, what is the type of material is this one is how how is the construction of it and what are its uses okay so basically optical fiber is a cylindrical wave uh, guide made up of transparent dielectric material glass or plastic which guides the light waves along the length uh, by its total internal reflection okay so the total internal reflection is the main part of this uh, topic so here what happens as you can see there are three things here the first is the core this is the uh, cladding and uh, this is the outside okay so those through uh, those three um, things are represented by n0 n1 and n2 okay so uh, when you put a light here in this way and the angle is uh, theta d at that time uh, sorry it's, uh, theta naught when uh, you put an angle at the angle theta naught and it gets reflected here it goes in the same path if you increase this angle more it will be a total internal reflection that's the main thing how the uh, travel uh, light gets traveled okay and uh, n2 has a lower refractive index than n1 and that's what makes the total internal reflection okay so this is the formula n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 so theta uh, c which is nothing but the critical angle will be equal to uh, n2 by sin inverse of n2 by n1 uh, theta 2 will be 90 degrees so it will sin theta uh, sin theta 2 will be equal to 1 so we just have n2 here taking uh, theta c as uh, means in this side and trans uh, transferring the other terms in this side we get theta c is equal to sin inverse of uh, n2 by n1 okay so this is the important derivation uh, under the under, uh, under this topic so here from the snell's law what we have n0 theta sin theta 0 is equal to n1 sin theta 1 okay so sin theta 0 is equal to n1 by n0 sin theta 1 and applying snell's law what we get is uh, n1 is equal to n1 sin uh, 90 minus theta 1 theta naught is nothing but uh, 90 minus sin theta 1 if you observe carefully in this diagram here 
this is 90 degree right here 90 degree and if you subtract 90 degree from here this angle is nothing but equal to this angle so that is uh, what we have written here theta naught is equal to 90 minus uh, sin theta 1 okay 90 minus theta 1 so uh, sin 90 minus theta 1 is cos theta 1 that is equal to n2 because sin n is 1 so cos theta 1 will uh, will get as n2 by n1 so sin theta uh, naught is equal to n2 by n naught root of 1 minus cos uh, cos theta square so from where we got this formula this from here okay by uh, putting the values of sin theta 1 here so sin theta 1 can be written as root of 1 minus cos square uh, theta 1 so cos square theta 1 we have n2 by n1 square so after simplifying finally you will get this answer n naught is here so we'll uh, put it as 1 so what we get the answer is this one okay this is the main answer and numerical aperture is only this one sin theta naught okay always remember sin theta naught is equal to the numerical aperture okay and what is the condition of propagation the theta i should be less than theta uh, naught okay so one uh, clarification i made here as like uh, it should be greater so the critical angle should be lesser than this one okay if you uh, take this uh, uh, ray of beam and put it in this way that, that will be uh, like uh, it will be total internal reflection if it is more than this it will not happen okay that's the uh, condition for propagation so if they ask you this question under the uh, topic total internal reflection you have to write till this point okay and uh, you have to write this one after that uh, gets over you have to uh, keep in mind two things what is acceptance angle the maximum angle at which the ray can be relative to the axis of the fiber and uh, propagate through the fiber numerical aperture is the ability of the optical fiber to accept light and what is the fractional change it is the refractive indices uh, subtracted uh, in a fraction uh, in a fraction manner it is n1 minus n2 by n1 okay this is the fractional change it is uh, used in numericals okay so remember this formula and uh, mode of propagation means how many signals are passing through the optical fiber so if only one signal is passing the uh, then the uh, mode is called a single mo uh, single mode fiber what is v number the number of modes supported for propagation that is called v number and here is the formula these terms are written here like the diameter and all so you can go through it and we'll be using this formula in the numericals okay now there are few types of optical fibers like single mode step index and uh, uh, graded so in single mode there will be just a single path here in which the uh, light will be traveling step index will have multiple uh, possibilities for the multiple uh, lights uh, light waves traveling together and graded will have the curved waves traveling together okay that is uh, that are the three types of uh, optical fibers and the losses occur mainly at two points absorption loss in which the if see this is the uh, material here and the light wave is passing through it so some light wave gets uh, trapped in these places right so that is the absorption loss and the second one is the scattering loss in scattering there are two types the scattering loss uh, means uh, when the light is um, put into the air at that time it gets scattered in the different places and only some light reaches the tunnel so that is one of the loss uh, scattering loss and another is, and, uh, another is the radiation loss Radiation loss occurs due to the microscopic and microscopic bends. So what happens when a light wave is here? At that time, if you put a light wave here, and at that time, it does not get uh, perfectly reflected. Some of the light wave goes here, some goes here, some goes here and all. So when this goes in this different direction, it will be lost. Okay. So those are the radiation losses. Coming to the sensors, there are two types of sensors. Intensity-based uh, displacement sensor, where we have the sensor in this form. There will be a pipe here and a pipe here also. There will be an object here. Light will be sent from here, it will get reflected here and it will be detected from here. That is intensity-based and temperature-based means there will be a temperature sensor here. Okay, That's what's the difference between these two sensors. They are used to sense um, what is the accuracy of the uh, given um, optical fiber. Okay. So uh, this is not all that uh, topics, there are few more topics but these are the most important uh, topics from the exam point of view and we will be discussing the numericals and the previous questions in, uh, in the other video and uh, thank you so much for watching, I will see you in the next one.